Hey, this is Connor with Congruent X, and today I'm going to be talking about Microsoft Dataverse. So this is the second installment of the Intro to Power Apps series. Today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Dataverse because that is at the foundation of just about everything. In the Power Platform, you are by no means uh, only allowed to connect to Microsoft Dataverse, but it will serve as a great example of what a database is, how it works, and it'll be great to demonstrate how Power Apps talk to a data source. So the first thing you're gonna do is navigate to make.powerapps.com. This is gonna be your home base for doing any and all customizations within your environment. And the first thing we need to take a look at is which environment we're currently in. So in the top right, you can see the current environment that you're looking at. In my case, I only have two. I have this environment and I have the default environment. So I'll leave some resources down below on how to actually create an environment and make sure that you have Dataverse installed. So there's a few different places that Dataverse is exposed in the UI for kind of customizations. Um, the main one we're gonna be talking about today is if you navigate to data, and you can see there's a bunch of different options and these are all things that kind of live in the Dataverse. The main component that you're gonna be familiar with is tables. So tables are exactly the way that they sound. It's just like an Excel table. The only difference is Dataverse is a relational database. And what that means is you can build relationships between multiple tables. There's a few different types of relationships we'll get into later, but for now, just understand that a Excel table is the same as a table in Dataverse. So let's take a look at accounts. This is a really easy table to understand. So before I explain any of these other tabs, let's go ahead and navigate to data and you'll be able to visually see how this table looks. So you can see here, this looks just like a table in Excel. We have columns at the top and we have rows running down the left. So in the columns tab, this is where you're gonna see all of the different columns that are a part of this table. Those columns have a display name, which is what's gonna be exposed to the users. You have a name, which is the schema name. This is what the database uses in the background. And you have the data type of the column. The other properties here, I'm not gonna mention, they're not important to know right now. So if you double click on one of the columns, we can see a little bit more information on that column. Again, we see the display name, we see the schema name, we can see this data type is an email type. We can also see a description of the column, and we also have some advanced options, which I'll get into later. And in this case, we have the max length. All that means is that's the maximum number of characters this field can be, and you can change that. So that's a rough explanation of what a column is and how they work. And probably one of the most important parts of our table is gonna be our relationships. And what I mean by that is the relationship between this account table and other tables in our database. So while there will be times that you need to go to this tab to look at the relationships, I think it's easier to teach when we actually look at the columns. So let's talk about the relationship between an account or company and a contact. In this case, we're gonna be talking about a primary contact meaning this is the main person we want to talk to regarding this account. In this case, there are many companies related to one account, meaning one contact could potentially be a primary contact for multiple accounts. Anytime you create a one-to-many or a many-to-one relationship, the many side gets what's called a lookup field. And it's essentially a link to the related field. So in this case, if we're looking at accounts and we look at the primary contact field, you'll see that the data type is a lookup field. We can see that the related table is contact. So all this means is that there's a field on the company that is a lookup to a different table, in this case, contacts. Now, if we go back to the relationships tab, let's talk about one-to-many relationships. There's also a relationship between accounts and contacts that is a one to many. There are many contacts who work at an account, right? So you can have multiple relationships between the same two tables or even with a table in itself. A account could have a parent account. But in this case, we're just gonna be talking about people that work at a company. Very first relationship we see listed here is called company name. 
And again, the relationship name is just what the system uses in the background. We can see that the related table is contact and the relationship type is one to many. So there's one company related to multiple contacts. And visually, the way that this looks is, say I'm looking at an account, Microsoft, I could potentially see a list of different contacts that work at that company. Again, it's different from the primary contact where it's not just showing me one person, it could show me multiple people because it is a one to many relationship. Now we're gonna come back to that relationship because there's one more layer of complexity that we need to talk about. But first, we're gonna talk about many to many relationships. A many to many relationship is exactly how it sounds. You have many rows of data in one table related to many rows of data in another or the same table. So there's a list of records related to each other on both ends. So I'm gonna circle back to the relationship between accounts and contacts. This relationship is actually not a regular one-to-many relationship. It is what's called a polymorphic relationship. And all that means is multiple tables can be included in that same relationship. So if we actually look at the lookup side of this relationship, so we're looking at the contact table, and we're looking at a field called company name. And the data type is actually called a customer. And all that means is it's a polymorphic relationship. In this case, a customer relationship can actually look at the accounts table or the contacts table. So it's just a way to kind of combine relationships that are gonna serve the same function. So in this case, the relationship means this person works at blank. So a person might not always work at a company. Sometimes they might work for a person, which is why this relationship is polymorphic. Meaning you can say, hey, this person works at a company or this person works for another individual. So the last thing I'll mention on relationships is you might see a lot of relationship fields called regarding. And again, all those are, are polymorphic lookup fields. Unlike the customer, polymorphic relationship where you have to either choose account or contact. In this case, regarding relationships, more often than not, you can relate just about any table in your database between this. The last thing I'm gonna mention for today, and I'm just gonna briefly glance over it, is security. So regarding data and Dataverse, we have the ability to restrict users' privileges at the table level, at the column level, and the row level. And again, just a reminder, row, record, same thing, right? It's just a line of data. So if you hit this settings in the top right, go to Admin Center, select your environment, select See All under Security Roles. So I'm just gonna dive in on the basic user role here. So I won't get into a lot of detail here. This probably looks a lot of crazy. We'll talk about it in a later video. But it's important to understand that you can control what users can do with specific tables, with specific columns, and with specific rows. In this case, you can see we have a couple different parameters that we can change for each table. We can control if users can create records or rows. We can control if users can read them, update them, delete them. Append and Append to allow the user to create relationships to and from this table and shares the ability to share a record. So I hope that made some sense for you. I hope you're kind of following along with me as I'm trying to explain this. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you found any of this helpful. And if you wanna find out more about Congruent X, go to congruentx.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.